welcome listeners to another wonderful night of cheer use of knowledge is power it is a beautiful cold wednesday evening <laughs> i am freezing hi al oh man <laughs> we it's one of them days today, i see you have your your flint skull cap on oh man i gotta get it on i got a bald head <laughs> man i'm trying my hardest not to put on a winter coat i have on a nice fall coat but I'm trying my hardest. Okay. You know, but I have the heat on at work. All right, good stuff. You know, I got that consumer power bill too today. <laughs> I like that price they they gave me. Good. But you know, winter hasn't gotten here yet, right. so we're doing good. Okay. And then my favorite person. Am I your favorite person? I think you're telling. Let me clarify. I think you're telling stories. My favorite person at the radio. No, that's Al at the radio station. Okay. So my <laughs> second favorite person. See? <laughs> <laughs> See what happened when reality hits? Uh, I'm surprised you didn't say seventh favorite person. Seven? Seventh. Mm, no, there's a couple more people. Just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-two again. How are you doing? I am always wonderful when I'm in your presence. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you're you so make sweet. me smile for you're no so reason. Sweet. Ain't that beautiful. You're so sweet. You know what? I've been having the opportunity to watch uh, Chia Use of Knowledge's Power on um, Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. No, I guess that's what? Friday night, Saturday morning? Yeah, it is Friday night, Saturday morning, 2 a.m. in the morning. And then, of course, I watch it on YouTube. Do you know I enjoy watching myself laugh? <laughs> I know you do. That's a sickness. <laughs> My auntie be telling me I had the giggles. <laughs> and so, you know, when you record in the mm -hmm. studio, I don't pay any any mm -hmm. attention to that. But then when I see it on the on the you know on the video on television, mm -hmm. boy, I really do be having the giggles. But I be enjoying myself here. So, <laughs> giggle, giggle, giggles. So tonight, listeners, if you're interested in our topic tonight. Please give us a ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. I, yeah. I forgot I was doing that. A ring-a-ding-ding -ding at 239-5733. Again, the number is 239-5733. Tonight, returning to the studio tonight is Miss Debbie Springer. Miss Debbie Springer is an adult education um, tutor who works with students of disabilities. She was previously on our show on July 28th. If you didn't get a chance to listen to her on July 28th, please visit our YouTube channel at Chia Adult Skills Center and look for the show, Retraining Adult Learners for Today's Challenges. And that's Miss Debbie Springer's show back in July. But tonight we're going to continue the conversation. So Debbie, I want to tell you thank you again for returning. And I'm ready for this wonderful conversation. So Debbie, how are children affected by their parents who cannot read and write? Um, children who can't read and write, or parents who can't read and write cannot help their children with their education. Mm -hmm. um, I've had students who had children that didn't even, and that the parent didn't even know the alphabet. How are they able to teach their children That's true. before they even go to school? Mm -hmm. And by the time they're five, they're supposed to know their alphabet, mm -hmm. their name, their address. Mm -hmm. And if they can't learn those things, then they're behind, That's even true. before they get to school. Mm -hmm. So parents with a learning disability mm -hmm. have even a bigger disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that a lot of the parents with learning disabilities are on medications, mm -hmm. which also then puts them another disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So any time a parent has any type of learning disability or any type of um, emotional disability, mm -hmm. It puts the um, children at risk. It does. This do, it does. So let's go back a little bit to recap from the sh uh, show back in July. Mm -hmm. Give the listeners and the viewers uh, a definition as to what is a disability, a learning disability, as to the type of students that you work with. A learning disability is any is a is a disability that um, doesn't allow the person to be able to read mm -hmm. properly. Um, let's say, for for example, if they go to the grocery store, um, they can they can picture what that thing, what the item is, mm -hmm. as long as there's a picture on the back okay. or the can, mm -hmm. but they cannot read it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a dyslexic problem where mm -hmm. things are backwards, mm -hmm. um, and that's a that's a big problem too, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if they're seeing the word saw, it mm -hmm. could be. Um, was mm -hmm. instead of mm -hmm. saw. Mm -hmm. So you have a big problem with that type of disability. 
dyslexic is a little bit more difficult to determine because it has to be determined by a psychiatrist. Okay. Um, I have been, over the years, been able to pick out people who may have that problem just by watching how they write. Mm -hmm. um, if they write letters backwards mm -hmm. or I've had students who had to wear sunglasses because mm -hmm. the letters squiggled. Oh, wow. And as long as he wore sunglasses, the letters didn't squiggle. Mm -hmm. So you kind of pick up on, on sometimes yeah. on the, that type of disability. Mm -hmm. Then there's, there's, there's like a mental disability that prevents people from learning. And mm -hmm. the biggest part with that is medication. Yes. Medication slows the brain down. Mm -hmm. And when your brain slows down, your ability to learn slows down. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when you're working with someone with, and I work with schizophrenic people mm -hmm. um, who are on heavy medication, mm -hmm. it takes longer for me to teach them yeah. than someone who just dropped out of school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's one problem that we have trying to get funding mm -hmm. for people with um, mental problems mm -hmm. or disability problems mm -hmm. because funders are not so inclined to give money because they they don't see progress. Yeah, like the they outcomes. Think that, yeah, yeah, the yeah. outcomes are not as as what they should. It's think not it as be. immediate. Right. Um, and it's yeah. not as yeah, it's not as immediate like yeah. a lot of the funders want. Even. It's not to say not, yes, yeah, it's just not immediate. It takes time when you work right. with individuals like that. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been working with um, adults with disability as far as tutoring them? Um, I've been working with them for the last, uh, about the last 15 years. Okay. I've had people who have had strokes, mm -hmm. um, who are, have had to <coughs> learn all over again. Mm -hmm. I had one student that he had really a not because his focusing wasn't right because of the stroke, mm -hmm. but if you, he could name off every single president of the United States, okay. every single vice president of the United States, mm -hmm. um, he could name off all the, the states, the capitals, and their nicknames. Mm -hmm. So there's certain parts of his brain that worked well, but then the other parts, his, his writing, mm -hmm. his speech, mm -hmm. that type of thing was slowed down. Okay. So that's another <coughs> disability, and to get funding for that, yeah. it's almost impossible. Yeah. So that takes me to my next question. I want to try to formulate it correctly. You and I both know that funding is basically cut for adult mm -hmm. education programs, <coughs> and that we have some <coughs> local philanthropists that are funding adult uh, training for some institutions and we have some people who are just volunteering <clears throat> to do some tutoring with adults um, actually that's two questions because uh, two questions popped in my head since I'm talking about tutoring um, but to stick with the first question funding has been cut for just basic adult education <laughs> and now we're talking about having to teach these adults on limited resources who have a learning disability but it's going to trickle back down to the children. So how does how does it affect children when their parents have a learning <coughs> disability? Children are affected because if you have a parent with a learning disability, mm -hmm. they're not going to say, okay, let's read a book. Mm -hmm. They're not going to maybe even allow a book in-house mm -hmm. because they can't read and they don't want yeah. their children to know that they do have that disability. Mm -hmm. I've had parents come to me and say, I don't want you to give my kids books mm -hmm. um, because they, they couldn't read because yeah. of their learning disability. It affects the children in many ways, it affects them socially mm -hmm. because of some children, I won't say all, but some yeah. children whose parents have a disability um, are shy. Mm -hmm. They not so come, they don't put forth mm -hmm. effort because they're ashamed because yeah. they're ashamed yeah, yeah. they're ashamed um, they don't do well in school mm -hmm. sometimes they end up having behavior problems yeah because of that mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different issues that deal with children and parents with learning disabilities yeah um, April Matthews she's a um, 
a behavior specialist, I think that was her title. If it's wrong, <coughs> April, please forgive me. I hope you're listening and you feel better soon thinking about you. But uh, she was talking about um, students who have disabilities and making sure that they have an IEP mm -hmm. and that the parents are actively involved. But when you have parents who have a learning disability, right they necessarily aren't involved in the child's academics because like you said they are ashamed to come forward um, and then they really don't understand the conversations that's taking place right. at the table with the teacher and the psychologist or whoever at the table besides the children. Right. Um, I do know several years ago a study was done and this was basically for women who were on uh, welfare but it was still women who had lower reading levels but they did a study about how they shop. And they come to find out they bought brand name items because they didn't know how to do comparison shopping by reading their ingredients right. on an off brand and a brand name item. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they relied on television to tell them the different types of things they <coughs> should purchase. So when they would go shopping, that's what was in their shopping cart was all brand name items opposed to being able to uh, because of, we already know that some of these brand name items, the same company make an off brand. Right. You know, and just reading the back, there might be just one mm -hmm. word different that made it an off brand. I don't brand. know if, if you remember back several years ago when some of the stores just carried a, a white a can that, that yes, had I white label that. with mm -hmm. black lettering. Mm -hmm. They stopped that. One of the biggest reasons they stopped it is because people who could not read mm -hmm. didn't know what was in a can because they look at the pictures. Yes. And they find marketing, mm -hmm. the brighter the picture, the more it's out mm -hmm. there, the more they're likely to buy it mm -hmm. because they they see the picture. Mm -hmm. They associate it with what they, what they see on TV. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost them more. Mm -hmm instead of buying a, a brand that's yeah. lower level but just as well, mm -hmm. just as good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's one reason why they stopped. But you know what, we're almost kind of going back to that to a point because on social media, um, <coughs> on Wednesdays, this Wednesday I didn't do it, I try to do a post about coming here to do the radio show. Now if I was to just write it out or do a text and mm -hmm. post it, I won't get as many likes as I would doing a video. Right. We're getting away from reading things opposed to, no, we're getting away from reading things. That's just period. And our language is evolving with the texting and with uh, the abbreviations of things. Um, if you were asked a new generation, matter of fact, we don't have to ask a new generation. I can have a younger person text me and they'll use this new language. And I'll ask them, what does it mean? It, I recently, Al, no joke, I just mm -hmm. learned what LOL was about two years ago. <laughs> you can look at me, right. yeah, primitive, because I don't know what LOL is. Oh. <laughs> you see? Right. And do, I do know that one young lady, honestly, someone was telling me about it, another colleague was telling me that a lady, a young, a young lady, wrote her English paper all in text. Wow. Like she was texting. Mm -hmm. Because we're evolving as humans, and we're, that's another form of a language. Right. Somebody texted me the other day, and I haven't had a chance to ask them what in the world it meant. Um, but then sometimes I think some people can just make up their own abbreviations as to what the words yeah, mean. Yeah, I mean, my son is an English <coughs> college English instructor, and he'll text me, and then I'll, I'll go, uh, wait a minute, you're an English teacher. You text the yeah. word, don't text it, because I have no idea what they say. What it means, what it yeah. means. So, but that, you're right, mm -hmm. that's the way it's going. Yeah, and yes. that's a big problem because what happens is now you're missing spelling, mm -hmm. you're missing using vowels, mm -hmm. um, you're missing a lot of different ways of writing. That's true. And when children go through and they're growing up with all these text stuff and they're missing out on actual spelling, when it comes to an adult and they do have to write, yes, then the problem is mm -hmm. they can't. A lot of adults, not only are they not testing at college level math, they're not even testing at college level writing. Oh, yeah. 
um, all of the students at Chi Adult Skills Center, when they're done with us with a GED, they all test into English 101. Mm -hmm. I have not met one who hasn't. Even when I was teaching at another institution, but they still went to uh, one of the local colleges, mm -hmm. they all tested mm -hmm. at English 101 because that's what I do, that's what I teach, and I'm serious about that writing. However, when you first get those adults in there, I'm not sure who taught us that just because you have a group of words together and an in punctuation, that's a sentence. Um, and it's not. Right. You have to, you know, have that subject and that predicate. Right. But writing is falling by the wayside, and it's, it's almost obsolete now. Right. Well, um, that and cursive writing. Oh, cursive writing. We only use it for signatures now. I know that. Yeah. But if a child does not know, I, I'm a notary, and mm -hmm. I cannot sign anything that is printed. Oh, I didn't know be, that. Yes. Notaries can only sign something if the name is written, not printed. Okay. And therefore, okay. you have a bunch of children who are growing up that can't yeah. even sign their name. Mm -hmm. We're going to be in a big trouble. Oh, well, yeah, especially, well, you know what? I don't know. We got e sign documents. Well, uh, e is it e sign mm -hmm. documents we have mm -hmm. now where you can automatically just create your own signature? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be yours. Right. You can re create your own signature, and then that's your signature on the document. Right. So, yeah, we're losing some yeah. of those basic skills. So how can parents or grandparents who are at or below the fourth grade level in reading and math help their children academically? First of all, they have to be willing to say, okay, I am not academically able. Mm -hmm. Then they, they should to get their children into a um, program for after school, mm -hmm. um, and a Head Start if they're pre pre-K, mm -hmm. get them into some kind of child develop, development program. Let's go back and say that again. Because there used to be a time whereas, and I, I have a problem with this one, Head Start was only for parents who made a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. For parents who made more than that, your child couldn't go to Head Start. And yeah. I didn't think that was fair at all. Um, but that's just how it is. So when you have parents who at the poverty line but not below the poverty mm -hmm. line, they still can't afford to send their kid to a child development center. So my question is, because I think I'm going to steer away from the original question, what can the babysitter, I'm learning so much now, what can the babysitter or what can the person who's watching over the child who's not able to go to Head Start, <coughs> what can they do in order to help the child uh, or prepare the child for academics? One of the biggest things they can do is to read. Mm -hmm. Read to the child. Storybooks are one of the best ways mm -hmm. to bring a child into awareness of reading. Mm -hmm. Um, if a child asks a person what that word is, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to tell them. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, when my son went to kindergarten. Now you're talking 40 years ago. Um, he he was able to read before he went into mm -hmm. school, and the teacher told me, <laughs> "Why did you teach him how to read?" And I said, "When my he son mm -hmm. came up to me and said, what's this word?'" What am I going to do? Act like I'm, I don't know it? No, I'm going to tell him the word. Mm -hmm. The parents need to say, okay, if I can't read it and the babysitter is babysitting, mm -hmm. let's hope the babysitter can read. That's true. That's what I was getting ready let's to say. Hope yeah. The babysitter, the babysitter that can read. read. That's right. The parent, on the other hand, could buy or could um, find ways to do like alphabet letters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are things out there, puzzles, things like that, that mm -hmm. will help the children learn. Mm -hmm. That's a way, there are a lot of different toys, and it's coming up Christmas, mm -hmm. where they could buy educational toys, and not just toys for play with, but toys that are going to be educational for mm -hmm. that child. Um, you know, you can get these little alphabet blocks and things like that. <coughs> and have even, the parent can even start out with simple words. Mm -hmm. If they have a picture of a cat with the word cat underneath it, mm -hmm. take the black and spell the word cat with the black. Yes. With the picture, you mm -hmm. can associate what that word is. Mm -hmm. That's not only helping the parent read, but it's mm -hmm. helping the child read. That's true. And it's a bonding thing. Mm -hmm. 
parents today have less bonding yes. with their children. Mm-hmm. And when they're working with your child, even on the basic stuff, mm-hmm. it's bonding with that child. Mm-hmm. You know, child care centers, the directors are required to have a degree, but the people who watch over the children aren't required to have anything. There is no assessment to state that they know how to read and write and do, read and ma- read and write and do basic math. And these are the ones that are working with the children. Not necessarily is it the director yeah. of these child care facilities. Um, but let, let me go back because I am like going over like two things in my head. Let's get back on people with disabilities because that mm-hmm. is your specialty. So. Parents with disabilities, what are the age group of the adults that you're working with that have disabilities? I work with, um, they're running the age of 18 up to, I think the oldest one is like 35. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of them are on a lot of heavy medication. Okay. Um, (coughs) Some are just, you know, just like an antidepressant, just one or two, or bipolar medication. Mm -hmm. Even that type of medication can slow the brain down. That is true. And um, when they have a disability mm-hmm. on top of taking the medication, mm-hmm. it's for the children, the parent is moving in a slower rate. Mm-hmm. And the child may be eager to learn, but the parent may put them off. That's why they say, go watch TV. That's true. And the TV becomes the teacher. Mm-hmm. And, but yet the parent doesn't say, you're gonna watch this show on TV. Mm-hmm. They let them watch any show Mm -hmm. because they don't realize that the child is picking up all this information Mm -hmm. from the TV, from the computer. Mm -hmm. Let's play video games while they're picking up all this information from different kinds of video games. Mm -hmm. Whether it's good or bad, that's hard to say because technology has come so far and children are so involved. I mean, you know, you have three-year-olds that know how to work cell phones. Yeah, that's true. You know, that that type of thing. Even though the parent can't read, mm-hmm. they can use a cell phone. Yeah, it's true. We have a lot of organizations that are trying now to come up with tutoring sites mm-hmm. to work with adults through throughout the city, not necessarily as Genesee County. And one of the challenges or the concerns I have is that people who may not be properly trained Mm -hmm. to work with people who are at a, who have a disability. Because a lot of times it takes, a lot of these people weren't uh, special ed in school. Right. If they were special ed in school, it wasn't picked up Mm -hmm. in school. So they become an adult, they've added more barriers on top of to the ones that they had in school if they graduated or didn't graduate because you know you and I are already working with adults who have graduated um, but you would never believe because they're still at or below Mm -hmm. a fourth grade level in reading and math but we have any sites now that are providing tutoring for these individuals and may not have the skill sets in order to identify if these people are having a learning disability What is your take on um, people volunteering to work with people? What would be, see it takes years to pick up on stuff. It's nothing that you can do overnight. It takes years. I've been doing this for 18 years and I run across something new every single day with an adult. But what kind of advice can you give a tutor um, who is beginning to work with these adult learners Mm -hmm. uh, and, and trying to get them to a point where they can start picking up on certain things um, because I'm not sure if these institutions are using adult well, learning plans. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest things with volunteer tutors is that um, anyone who has a high school diploma mm-hmm. basically can volunteer to tutor. To pick up on someone who is disabled, um, who has a learning disability, uh, it takes a while. I have got three tutors that work with me mm-hmm. that I per- personally trained and they are able to pick up on different disabilities mm-hmm. with the people that we work with. Mm-hmm. But then again, they, they watch me mm-hmm. work with um, the, the ones who are disab- disabled. Mm-hmm. All the new programs that are coming <laughs> in, my advice is don't take on someone with disability right away mm-hmm. because you're going, you may end up doing more harm yeah. than good. 
give your give them give the tutors time. Let the tutors find um, some some more training mm -hmm. on how to recognize mm -hmm. a person that may be, um, let's say, dyslexic. Yeah. Okay. You know, if I get a person like that, I refer them to the Dyslexia Institute on Miller yeah. Road. I don't even touch it. Like you yeah. said, there's some things I won't even touch. I refer out. Um, because there are institutions or organizations, should I call them, that mm -hmm. does specialize type things. But keep going, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, they have, you know, if you have a, someone that you suspect may be mm -hmm. dyslexic, um, the person who's running that program should be aware, That's should true. be made aware of that. Mm -hmm. They would make that decision on what mm -hmm. to do as far as continuing the tutoring or maybe find someone who is able. Mm -hmm. um, more inclined. Mm -hmm. I get students all the time that say, oh, I was in special ed in school. Yeah. The special ed in schools, I don't, I hate saying anything against it, schools, but it has become a catch-all. Yeah, it is a catch-all. And for kids who have missed a lot of school, regardless of whether or not they should be there, mm -hmm. because they missed a lot of school. And they're they put, academically behind. Yeah. yeah. They put them in special ed. I have been subject teach. I have mm -hmm. taught special ed students mm -hmm. in elementary schools. Mm -hmm. It needs to be revamped. For anybody who don't know, special ed was basically for children who had a physical disability who went to a separate school than the other children. Right. There was a law put in place that allowed those children to integrate into the regular school system. Mm -hmm. Now. They used to still be separate from the rest of the kids during class time. Then the laws changed again. Then they integrated them into the classroom. So some kids are able to be in a classroom with their peers all day long. Then some of them have an IEP that states how long they can be in the class right. with the other children. This time it was done in order for the kids not to be ostracized or to build their self-esteem. But the truth is, the kids already know who's academically behind. So anytime you're putting those kids with learning mm -hmm. disabilities in the classroom with kids who are moving forward, two things happen. Either the class is going to slow down because the teacher who didn't have that special ed certification have to slow down in order to help the kid who is behind. Right or the kid that's behind is going to become even more behind because she cannot leave her class because of that right. one child or and so. And you know what that does to a child's self-esteem? It does. It's it still the self-esteem issue. It, yeah. And that's why we have so many more dropouts yes. with, with people with disabilities. Yes. So, listeners, if you are an adult over the age of 25, that needs help in basic reading and basic math. We here at Chia, I say here like we're at here, but this is the radio station, but we here at Chia Adult Skills Center are able to help you. We are accepting enrollments for adults 25 years of age and older who live in three specific zip codes, 48504, 48505, and 48506. I'm asking you to please give us a call at 810-553-2140 in order to help you. And listeners and viewer, viewers, I thank you for another wonderful night. Have a great work week. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchooled.com.